I am super excited to be here this afternoon with Jamie Kassip. Welcome, Jamie. Thanks for having me. You bet. We, uh, we're so excited that you're going to be part of our lineup at this fall's School Administrators of Iowa annual conference. It starts with us. And you will be joining us on our opening day, uh, Wednesday, July 31st. Mm -hmm. So again, excited to have you in Iowa. I don't know, have you been to Iowa before? Many times, yes. Oh, fantastic. Okay, yeah. so it'll and be- by, cool. And by July, and by July, there'll be, you know, three, four hundred Democrats, you know, going around meeting people because they're running for president. So it's it's a busy hopping time here. Yes, no doubt about it. Well, I uh, today I wanted to uh, take a few minutes to just visit with you about a couple questions. The first one, what makes you so passionate about your topic uh, and what could administra administrators expect from your session? So, again, just what what makes you so passionate? Yeah. So so for me. You know, edu education is the most important thing we can focus on, right? And and it's personal, right? Because and, and if you look at my work, whether it's the work that I do, um, you know, on behalf of schools, the work that I do with working with schools. I started a school in Phoenix. I teach tenth grade communication skills. I teach at Arizona State University. Um, you know, I go around the world talking about education. And I started a YouTube channel to talk about issues and, and advice and career and those types of things for young people. You know, and I do all this because I believe that education is the most important thing we can focus on. Education disrupts poverty. Education changes a family's destiny. Education is what moves us forward. And it's personal for me because I wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be talking to me if it wasn't for education. And we can say that for a lot of people, right? You know, it's, it's funny, we, you hear this narrative that education is broken or education doesn't work. And I, and I, I sit in a room with a thousand people or 5,000 people and I'm like, education worked for all of you, right? Like, like this idea that it hasn't worked. It was worked for millions of people. Has it worked for everyone? Absolutely not. Can we do better? Yes. And that's what I want to focus on. So for me, it's personal. I am a first generation American. Uh, my mother came here from Argentina. Well, not here, but to New York from Argentina. And I was raised by a single mother uh, for big chunks of my life. I grew up on social services like welfare checks and, and food stamps. Uh, New York City, you know, Hell's Kitchen in the 70s and 80s was a violent, hellish place. And, you know, I went to lots of funerals when I was in high school. Um, nobody made it out of those communities. Most people that I knew were in and out of jail. Um, and the only way to get out of something like that was to either be really good at sports, uh, be really good at music, and even with music, it wasn't even that big of a deal back then, um, or you know, get your education. So that's what I decided to focus on and graduate high school, went to college, went to graduate school, and, and I get to stand here or sit here to talk to you about the importance of education. Now, here's the thing though, it's, it was great for me, and I can look at it from a selfish perspective in terms of what, what it, how it helped me. But the reality is that the impact goes on for generations and generations, that those teachers didn't just help me. They helped my family. They helped the community. They helped society in large because now I have my own kids, and I, my, you know, I have one kid who's graduated college. I have another one who's going into college. I have another one who's four years old. We don't know what she's going to be doing. She drives me crazy. But... <laughs> the, um, but, but I know they're going to be okay and that they're going to go have kids and they're gonna, that's the impact that we have that it goes on for generations and generations. So that's part one of why I'm passionate about education. Part two is that I think that this is the most exciting time in history since electricity. And so therefore it becomes the most exciting time in history for education that what we're doing now, what we have to do in education now is exactly what our forefathers in education did 150 years ago. Just as the Industrial Revolution started, education needed to support that world. And they did an amazing job supporting that world. Everything from the right number of people who had to graduate from higher education to the right skills that people had to have for the, for the manufacturing and factories and Industrial Revolution that we were facing, they did an amazing job. Before that, right, during the agriculture economy, we didn't need a lot of education, so therefore education didn't support that as much. There were home schools, there were little, you know, one house school houses. So our forefathers created this education system that created a superpower of a country, right? We, we, everything we've innovated and developed and, and 
everything here is because of our education system. So what I think we need to do is what our forefathers in education did and ask ourselves, what's the right education model for the future that we face? And how do we start building that idea? So I'm excited that we are at this opportunity, right? That for 150 years, education has, has been chugging along. And now we have to like remodel the whole thing based on the future that we face. And that this generation of teachers and educators and administrators are the ones who are going to be creating what this new model looks like. In the, and, and, and the fact is that the education model of the future needs to have, um, uh, needs, to ha needs to be able to reflect what we're building in society. I, I love and your passion. My, and there's my dog. And your pet. <laughs> I, I, I do. I love your passion and I love the authenticity in your voice and the belief and faith in and commitment to education that you have. And I'm, I'm glad you shared your story. I had read, read your bio and had some insight and just what a success story. And I love that you see the value and attribute so much of that to your educational experience. So I, I'm, I know that what you share because of your own passion will be contagious for our school leaders. Uh, and I know you'll be focusing on the role of the learner. Can you tell us a little bit about what might be a couple of takeaways for those of our, our attendees who are part of your session? Yeah, so, so I think that there's a couple of things. One is, and I, I heard, I talked a little bit about this just a minute ago, this idea that the narrative to me doesn't work. The narrative that education is broken doesn't work. The narrative that education hasn't changed in 150 years doesn't work. Education has changed. Education has changed in the last 10 years. So again, it's, it's this, this idea that we don't start with education is broken and we have to fix it. Start with, okay, what we need to do is understand the future that we face. So I will be talking about that. What is the future that we face? What, what are our students facing in terms of what I call digitalization and what's happening in that space? And then how do we take the best ideas? The, the one thing about education that we don't talk a lot about is that we've been able to collect some amazing data and information and research around what good learning looks like. We know what good learning looks like. Now, technology is at the point where we can take advantage of it and we can say, what are the best ideas that we have in education? And then how do we use technology? How do we use digitalization tools to bring those ideas to life, right? And, and, and so it's, it's, a, it's a mindset to change and to think about education from that perspective, from a not it's broken, but a what we, let's take it to the next level. Let's take what worked really well and bring it to the next level. I will, I will be talking about this generation of kids and what they face. It's different. Um, I'll talk about how skills, uh, so, so I'll talk about how jobs are shifting and changing, not necessarily going away. That's another narrative, like the robots and, auto, you know, robots and automation are coming to take your jobs. That's not what's happening. What's happening is um, jobs are changing they're, and they're changing faster. So that means we really have to pay attention to the skills that kids develop to be prepared for that pace of change. So I'll talk about that. And, and then the last idea, and this is back to, I mean, I have some other ideas, but the last big takeaway is this idea that learning today happens faster than in any time in history, right? You can learn so much, like, so I, I, I've been playing with this idea, which is that if you think about what the world looked like 150 years ago, you know, infrastructure and technology and and, and medical procedures and everything that we had 150 years ago. And then look at the world today, like you and I talking face to face over a video camera and with lights, electricity and, and every and technology and everything that we have. And then understand and realize that everything that we have in front of us right now was actually available to us 150 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like some spaceship crash landed here and dropped off all this modern technology 10 years ago. We we're using the exact same resources that were available 150 years ago. Why didn't we invent these things 150 years ago? Was, it was because learning took too long. The process took too long, right? Like for you and I to have a conversation about a good idea in education, what would it take 150 years ago? Mm -hmm. I would write you a letter, you know, I'd put it on the Pony Express and send it out to you and say, when you get a chance, come visit me in Phoenix and you know, Three months later, you would show up if you could come at all, right? Or, or you'd send a letter. I mean, think about the process of learning and how long, it, how long it took to learn and compare that to today. 
Compare that to what I can learn instantaneously today. P compare that to how information is available to us at our fingertips. Compare that to how information now, in, information, here's the best, the best way of thinking about it. Information used to be power. Who had information had power. Now information is across the board. It's a commodity. It's what we do with that information and how do we take information and create original thought from it. So I, that's exciting to me. And I, and I think that we have to look at it from that perspective. So for me, it's not fixing education. It's not, it's, it's about understanding the future, understanding what we face and then asking ourselves, what are the best ideas? How do we make those ideas go forward? And how do we continuously do it? So this isn't, Here's the bad news. The bad news is that we're we're not going to pro we're not going to create a what's the classroom going to look like in 20 years? That that those days are over. Like trying to create something 20 years from now and then building it now and then just coasting along for the next 20 years that doesn't work anymore. So the bad news is that it's a constant and consistent process. That the future classroom starts on Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday and then Thursday. It's every day, every single day. We have to go through this. And we have to constantly evaluate what we're doing and constantly adjust because things happen so fast that so it's a mind shift. It's a mind shift in terms of thinking about what the future looks like. I love it. I, I wish you were here right now. I'm, I'm so excited. I, I think you have such a powerful, positive message to share with our colleagues and it makes so much sense. And I appreciate so much all the rich experiences that you have that you'll be able to bring to bear on the conversation. So super excited to have you here for our SAI annual conference. Uh, and I, I wish the time would go quickly. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Thanks for not having it in the winter. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So we'll look forward to seeing you on July 31st. Thanks, Jamie. All right, sounds good. See you then.